My message this morning is called Siding with Love. And I wanted to talk about it because we're, we're in times when we are going to be meeting people every day. Um, and whether we know it or not, we might be meeting people who think very differently from the way that we do. And it's, it's a challenge we will all face. Uh, and it's even more important in the coming days and weeks and years to try and figure out how to bridge those divides. Now, a few weeks ago, I shared uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s quote about love and power and justice, how power without love is reckless and abusive, and love without power is sentimental and anemic. And power at its best, he said, is love implementing the demands of justice. And that justice at its best is love correcting everything that stands against love. So here we have this idea that power and love and justice must act together in the name of love if we are going to move forward into a brighter future for humanity. It's a huge task before us, isn't it? But this morning, in these times that we live in, they demand another framework for talking about love. It's Valentine's Day, the day after yet another tumultuous week. And I know, I know we all need respite from the news and more news and opinions about the news. And maybe you're just looking for an hour's worth of tranquility, please. I want to give you some relief, yes. But part of my responsibility to you is to offer you some perspective along with the piece. So I wanna talk about the relationship between love and something as important as power and justice. And that is the truth. Unitarians and universalists are seekers of truth. They were considered heretics when they first emerged and the word heretic comes from the Greek heretikos, basically meaning one who chooses, one who chooses what to believe. For centuries, we have been those heretics, believing something other than the Trinity and other than believing in the salvation of the few. Unitarians believed in God as one, and universalists believed in salvation for all. We have grown and evolved over the centuries. Today, we like the idea of a free and responsible search for the truth and meaning. It is our fourth of our seventh principles. And as we go deep into the idea of truth, we crystallize what we value about it. And that says something about ourselves. What do we, what do you value about finding the truth and knowing the truth? Some of us, particularly in the last century and a half, wanted truth to be about the nature of reality, truth as an objective fact, like gravity. Do we want truth like gravity? Do we want truth with a capital T that stands firm before us no matter how each of us perceives or how each of us feels or how each of us wants something out of life? Some truths with a capital T lead us to despair. Humans are horrible, we might say. Or 
we will always have disputes, we will always have fights about the truth. Some of us want one truth, one room with many windows, one tree with many leaves. And coincidentally, the beliefs that God is love or all faiths lead to one faith are the big T truths. But our, our transcendentalist Ralph Waldo Emerson liked to think about truths with a small T as much as he liked to think about truths with a large T. And he thought our individual intuition combined with our experiences would lead us to contemplate individual truths that would help us make meaning out of our lives and that weren't necessarily shared with our friends and companions. We call these truths, truths with a small T because they are guideposts for each of us rather than the multitude. And we affirm our truths. After all, we work hard to create them. We think about them, we read about them, we, we check our truths against what we see in the world around us. And when we find those truths that are right for us, what's the first thing we wanna do? We wanna enlighten others. We wanna share with others what we have found, the right way to do things, the right way to live, the right way to be, the right way to interact with people. Now I know this because as I have confessed to you before, um, I have a desire to be right that is so strong that I have to deal with it constantly, every day. And I'm going to have to for the rest of my life because I, I came from a family that insisted on being right more than being loving and it's left its mark. I know firsthand that people who need to be right can wield truth like a club. Little T truths and big T truths start skirmishes <laughs> among families and friends and communities and countries and big T truths can start wars. We need something to go along with the truth. Something that, as a matter of fact, does not appear in our seven principles, although it is implied, but the word never appears. And it's something that we have seen too little of, especially in these times, and that is love. We have tended to see truth and love as unrelatable, even opposites. We have said by word and by deed that truth is more important than love, than love of our neighbors, our communities, our country. Is that really possible? Can truth be at its best without love? And, and what do I mean when I say love? I mean seeing oneself as part of the whole. I mean decentering oneself out of love, listening closely out of love, absorbing the reality of others, all of it, all of what makes other people tick and extending love to that person. To my mind, that is at the core of our struggle today. Our struggle to come to grips with our own past and present truths and to connect with and relate to the people that we encounter along our journey through life. I see love as the only way to understand the truth as someone else understands it. 
Love is the only way to understand truth as someone else understands it. Love is the only way to listen closely because that which makes life understandable and bearable will be someone's truth, will explain someone's truth, their, their understanding about why things are the way that they are because it makes life understandable and bearable when it feels like it isn't. Although we don't use and mention the word love in our principles, we do put it into action as a denomination. As a denomination, we affirm love as a foundation for our service and advocacy to the world. One of the pathways that we take to do this is our Side with Love campaign. And you can look it up on your uh, computer. The campaign's website describes it as amplifying the voices of the oppressed through the media, through online media, and showing up in partnership at justice events around the country lobbying national leaders on immigration reform and racial justice and equality for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people, religious freedom, and more. And above all, we work to make love real in the world. And here in this community, we say that we are a church that puts love at the heart of everything that we do. You know, it's so easy to do that every Sunday morning. It could almost be a throwaway line. It could almost be a throwaway line if I didn't know how hard it is. It is the hardest principle to live by, to put love first rather than being right about the world first. It's important. It's important because the pain of our lives makes sense if we can name a truth about the universe or about humanity. The pain of our lives makes sense if we can name a truth about the universe or about humanity. And others are doing the same thing for themselves. To love our neighbors, we need to know this about them. They are struggling to make the world make sense. And sometimes we and they get lost. And it, it has to do with coming up with a truth that serves a different purpose than making sense. There's some times when we come up with truth for ourselves that relieve our isolation. Finding others who feel the same way or believe the same way gives us a sense of belonging. Sometimes we come up with truths that only serve to confirm where fault lies. Where can we place the blame? Who of the others should be ashamed? Sometimes we come up with a truth that explains why things are going wrong, explains why things are going wrong. Sometimes we come up with truths that only serve to make us feel like we are the good guys and others are just plain wrong. There's something exhilarating about that. There's something that makes us feel powerful when we can believe that. Make us feel special, but above all, protects us against the hurt of living. We have to be careful. 
we have to be careful in our search for truth that we don't leave love behind because we are all vulnerable in this way. I was serving a congregation in West Hartford years ago. And when I first met the uh, senior pastor there, um, she had a little, a little plaque on her desk. And um, it belonged to Wallace Fisk, who was a beloved, beloved minister in West Hartford for many, many years. And it was a, a quote from uh, words written by a physician and poet, Spencer Michael Free. You may have heard of him, but he's got a very famous poem uh, called The Human Touch. And these words are actually the entry to that poem. They start the poem. Above all, let us be kind to one another. Nearly everyone we meet is fighting a hard battle. We are all sometimes troubled and anxious, hurting and heavy of heart. Let us be kind to one another and to everyone as far as we could reach. Why is this so hard? It is hard to remember love when someone is using their righteousness, their truth like a club, figuratively and literally. I'm talking about the figurative here, not the literal. I am not a saint and I don't expect you to be either. But I'm also talking about Wilkerson's narrative about the plumber, her Hail Mary moment. She found within herself the capacity to tell him something real, something vulnerable about herself. And it let her connect with him, with his reality with his vulnerability. And they connected with their pain. In the rest of her book, Wilkerson talks about the truth that humans can be horrible for reasons, for fears that make no sense. But she ended up with a story about love casting out fear. And I'd like to share with you a, a, a quote from the epilogue of her book. If each of us could truly see and connect with the humanity of the person in front of us, search for that key that opens the door to whatever we may have in common, whether cosplay or Star Trek or the loss of a parent, it could begin to affect how we see the world and others in it, perhaps change the way we hire or even vote. Each time a person reaches across cast and makes a connection, it helps to break the back of cast. Multiplied by millions in a given day, it becomes the flap of a butterfly wing that shifts the air and builds to a hurricane across an ocean. I want a world like that. I want a world like that for you, for us. Let's help in our own individual ways with our own individual truths to make that happen. Thank you.